going on everybody? Coming at you live from my basement. Um, I wanted to do a quick video on how to make a sprinkler frog. I've seen a lot of these out on uh, YouTube right now and with the limited availability of this lure, um, I figured I'd give it a shot myself. Um, this one is a little bit different than what everybody else is doing with the split ring and all that. So I want you guys to pay particular attention to some of the details. Um, I will put everything below in the description, um, but it's really simple. I mean, um, basically what the sprinkler frog is, is a combination of a hollow bodied frog um, and a whopper plopper. And the, the idea behind this is that you can take a frog and add a device to the back that makes a plopping sound, causes some disturbance, gets the fish, fish's attention. Now, this is one of my favorite topwater lures. We've got probably six of them, six to eight of them. Um, what I love about this thing is that, I mean, it, the hooks are sticky, it catches fish um, repeatedly. It's, it's an awesome, awesome, awesome bait. What I don't like about it is it's not weedless. So, um, unless you got grass below the water line, um, you're not going to be able to fish this in cover without getting hung up. And I've lost a couple of them, one on a fish and one in lily pads. So um, with that being said, um, basically, this is the kind that you're seeing online right now. It is a split ring. It's got a swivel and it's got a um, bait keeper in the back that goes in the back of a swim jig that I've cut off. So this is a Kai Tech. Okay, so it's really simple. What I've found out using this method <clears throat> is that once it's hooked up to the frog, it makes the frog twist in the water. Um, this sits low in the water column so you don't get that plopping sound and you don't create a lot of disturbance. Now, with my method, um, it's not, it doesn't sound like a whopper plopper. So I don't want you guys to sit there and think that Oh, I'm going to have a whopper plopper on the back of this frog. It's just not going to happen that way. So basically, I've made two of these so far. And I've caught fish on them. Um, in fact, I'll put a link down below again um, to a, a little outing I had recently. And it was pretty successful. Um, so anyways, here, here's what I've done. I've taken a Booyah pad crasher and... I've modified the hooks. I just bent them up a little bit to help my hook set because I'm an awful frog fisherman. So I've taken a uh, Booyah pra uh, cra uh, pad crasher, sorry, and <clears throat> I've, let me see if I can see this in here. Yeah, it's showing up pretty good. Okay, so I've taken a swivel, taken a bait keeper, and taken a Kai Tech tail. And I basically hooked it up to the hooks using a wire. And this particular wire, something you all know as a paper clip. And this thing works. So the best part about this is I can position this by bending this um, paper clip and I can position it higher on these hooks, which allows me to position this higher in the water column. With the split ring, it stays down here. So it's only under the water. And the good part about this adds a little bit of weight so you can stop and go, stop and go. And it, and, and it sits just like the whopper plopper, okay? When you're not retrieving it, it goes like this. When you're retrieving it, this does rotate. Depending on the speed of your retrieve, you might get a little bit of a swim jig action or swim bait action, um, a little side to side. Um, but basically, um, this is what I've done. So basically, if I can get this thing to, to focus, let me see. I've just bent this thing, and what it looks like, it's almost like a trailer hook set up for a frog. Um, straighten out your paper clip, put your swivel on, bend it, create this little circle, and then you use a pair of needle nose and wrap it around your hooks. Then you just put your bait keeper through. And another real important thing I found out is that the length of the swim bait tail you use really matters. So, um, and like I said, uh, it doesn't plop like so distinctively like the whopper plopper does. It doesn't give that plop, 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 plop. It's more of a subtle plop. Um, it's very quiet and it's also 
um, very effective. So um, yeah, that's it. That's my setup. So I've done that on the Booyah Pad Crasher. Oh, and the other thing is I just cut the skirts off and left these little uh, pigtails. Um, I've seen people filling those holes with uh, super glue. I tried that on this Spro Frog, and what I'm noticing is that the super glue has failed, and this and this thing fills up with water very quickly. Um, here's another version of it. Um, I have. I don't know if you can see that. Try to get it in there, but it's very very simple. And like I said, um, this is a Reactions Innovation swim tail. And I don't like it as much as the um, Kitech just because the angle of this doesn't allow it to rotate as much. And it's, I don't know, it just doesn't work as well. So I'll be switching it over to a Kitech. Um, but what you wanna do for a swim, for a swim bait is you wanna look for something that's vertical. Um, because that allows more drag and more rotation. So look for a swim tail that's more vertical. The more sloped you get, the, the more swim action you're gonna have and no rotation. If you look at the, um, the Sprinker Frog, they have a very rigid tail and they're basically vertical and they don't have um, this, this little angled part. It's just, it goes straight over and straight down similar to the Whopper Plopper where it's very vertical and, and it forces rotation. All right guys, with that, I'm going to, like I said, put a link in the description below to all the stuff that I used to make this. I will also put a link into the video that shows um, a little bit of action with this thing, um, how it crawls over top of cover and how it can catch fish. So. Until next time, guys, I appreciate you watching. Go ahead and hit subscribe for me, and I will be seeing you guys later. Thanks a lot.